Halloween and the season of light are almost here, so let's add a little bit of magic to otherwise ordinary smart LED lighting. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Life in the Smarter Home. When I talk about magic, I am referring to rules, triggers, and those things that make your home automation system respond automatically to various events. And with LED lighting, I'm specifically talking about Philips Hue, and on this episode, about their new motion sensor. Now, let me go over the specs real quick about it. It has a 16-foot approximate uh, range and about 100 degrees field of view, horizontal and vertical. And it has two user-replaceable AAA batteries that uh, should last roughly three years. Now, you're going to say, well, it's a motion sensor. You just described it. That's pretty boring. Um, but when you connect it to something like Philips Hue, it gets much more interesting and you can adjust and program it. But more on that in a little bit. Obviously, it fits in the palm of your hand. It's small. It's really small, actually. Two inches square by about one inch thick. And it comes with a unique and magnetic mounting system that you can attach with a you know screw into the wall or just place it on like a fridge. And then you can angle and rotate and twist it to get it to the angle that you need. In fact, you can mount it just about anywhere. So yes, mount it basically anywhere. It. Where did it go? Oh, it. how did it wind up over here? I swear this thing kind of has a little mind of its own. Um, I need my phone as well. I wonder where it... Oh, look, it's um, being delivered right to me. How convenient, but I need you to stop. Like, right there would be good. Okay, so when you get this out of the box, it's going to have a little battery tab. You're going to pull that out, and it will enter uh, pairing mode. You'll go into the Philips Hue app. Go to accessory setup, hit the little plus sign, and select Hue Motion Sensor. But I've done this a number of times, so I'm going to hit the little setup button on the back for about one second. One. Hopefully that did it. There we go. We've got an orange blinking light, which you will get as well. That means we're in setup mode. LED is blinking. I'll hit this, and we'll fast forward a little bit. So it is now successfully connected. I'm going to place it in the main space because that's where it is. Uh, you can hook up multiples of these and we'll get into more of that uh, later. Um, you want to place it where it's going to cover the area that you want to detect motion. This is just for testing. I'm going to say got it. Um, these are the defaults. We'll play with more of these later, but it sets up daytime, nighttime. Nighttime is really for like night light detection or night light activation. It is setting up all the defaults. Everything's good to go. One accessory found. And you'll see that it says, all right, sufficient daylight um, and inactive. Now we can go into the settings real quick. We'll play with these later, but I just want to show you, you have motion, um, uh, motion. Uh, you know, it's detecting motion, it's in test mode, and you can change that. You can change the daylight sensitivity. We're going to leave it as is right now. And you can adjust what it does, when it does it, and so forth. We'll do that in here in a second. So I'll hit save, um, but this might not be a fair test because I've got this huge studio light in front of me, but we do have noon, uh, midday sun coming through the window. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off through HomeKit and we'll see if it reacts and it should, I should have nothing. There should be still enough daylight where no motion is being detected. But now let's do a comparison. We're doing this test right now during the day, but what about at night? This is the same amount of ambient light that was present in the room a few hours ago, minus, of course, the sun. This is my uh, everyday general scene, as I like to call it. I turned the sensor off so I could turn it back on and do the motion test, um, and we'll see if it functions and turns things on it at night. Go backward a bit, and there it goes. And you can see motion detected just now. But it doesn't make sense to have lights come on automatically if there's already lights on. So let's go in and change that. This is something you would do with a manual control on, a, on an old-fashioned motion sensor. But I can bring it down here, and uh, it'll go into the orange and say it's not going to trigger. So that is excellent. And if I hit Save, uh, it'll say now sufficient daylight. I like to call it just sufficient light. Anyhow. 
So I can go in here. I'm going to bring our studio light back on since we're not doing the test anymore. Let's run through the other settings real quick. When there's no motion detected, the timeout period, you can set that to whatever uh, you would like. You can set it to also turn off. It'll dim and then it'll turn off um, or do nothing. So again, another configuration option. There's two time periods. One is the day kind of extends into the night, whatever uh, that period is for you. And then uh, a night, which I like to think of as overnight, like if you want to trigger a nightlight to come on as you're stumbling in the dark to the fridge to get a midnight snack or a drink or something like that. And you can change these obviously to leave them at the defaults that were set up. Um, you could change it to anything you like from the Philips defaults to your own scenes that you can create and modify. And uh, I can go in and uh, maybe change this from uh, a nightlight to kind of a nice blue nightlight. And if you need this to be in more, if you need this to affect more than just one room, you can go in and add additional rooms and it will basically give you additional options. And you can connect multiple sensors. Each one can control up to three rooms of Philips Hue lights. And ordinarily at this point, I would do a demo. I would, you know, walk through the hallway and stumble to the fridge and lights would come on, but that's and maybe not that interesting. Let's do something with a little bit more um, drama and color and bold light. But let's do one last test. Can the sensor see in the dark or by candlelight? Survey says absolutely no problem. One other note on functionality, it only interacts with lights that are set up on your Philips Hue bridge. And trust me, I tried to get them, I tried to get it to interact and activate uh, things uh, tied to HomeKit and other other home automation systems and I could not. So at least that functionality, at least for now, is not available. My personal opinion, I do think it is an excellent little motion sensor. It is um, great for those who would be all in on Philips Hue lighting and want a new way to activate it and to control it. It is um, fast to respond. You can mount it anywhere and again, updates via software uh, on into the future. It is 40 bucks on Amazon. We've got a link to it in the video description and uh, our links uh, do help out the show. So we appreciate it when you use those. Uh, if you've got questions on this topic, LED lighting or home automation, or I should have set the time out a little bit longer there, send them in and maybe your fun Halloween photos using, using Philips Hue lighting and uh, your fun motion sensor uh, for any of that stuff to questions at smarterhomelife.com. Uh, please give a like to this episode on YouTube, uh, subscribe so you get all of our different content. And if you really enjoy our content, please become a supporter over at patreon.com slash smarter home life. Otherwise, I'm Jody Ganzik reminding you to make your home a little bit smarter every single day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.